welcome to the fifth episode of the Weekly Pleb. I am your host, Douglas Rieger. Given the ironically self-defeating chaos of MAGA snowflakes storming our nation's capital last week, lots of people online seem to think that 2021 is getting off to a rough start. I could bore you with whatever our Cheeto-in-Chief is up to, or the fact that he's made history as the first U.S. president to be impeached twice, but that's for the 24-hour news mainstream media to tell you all about, as I'm sure they already have. Instead of focusing on all the absurdity and chaos in the world around us, I think it's important that people know how to be introspective and aware of your immediate surroundings, as well as the entire universe around you. Taking a breath and thinking before you take action in any situation is an extremely human thing to do, and yet we live in a society that continuously makes it easier and easier to act without thinking. That's why, for this episode, I sat down with a philosopher as he explains to us why it's important to think philosophically from time to time. My guest expert this week is amateur philosopher Charlie Beacom. How are you, Charlie? Hey, Douglas, Doug, whatever. How's it going? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Got school starting, getting into some philosophy. Yeah. Life is good. Life is yeah. good. Hopefully, a better year than last year so far. So far, so good. Eh, not this year. Last year started off better than this year for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Perry. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, that was the last time I saw you now, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a while ago. Man, hey, we got, yeah, it's about the time I got back last year. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway, we're here. Let's Anyways, see. so you're into philosophy, right? Absolutely. Philosophy, science, started out as a biologist, but philosophy and psychology has sort of pulled me over. I still think psychology is part of biology, and philosophy and psychology sort of work together the about obviously about the mind and everything pretty much relates to the mind with philosophy so it's a good synergy that's what i'm studying right now i'm a i'm president of the philosophy club at svsu so I founded it so i'm Very pretty cool. into philosophy like yeah it's just it's it's hard to find people that are interested in it, people that want to listen to it, but like, I don't know. Like, it's yeah. still, there's still people having discussions that, that I agree with this whole podcast. Like, we got to have more people talking. We got all this technology. People ain't talking. People yeah. ain't trying to find a common ground or anything. And that's part of philosophy, too. Yeah, well, that's a big problem nowadays. People can't ever find common ground. It feels like that's, but you, you hit the nail on the head, I think more people just talking to everyone mm -hmm, Re absolutely. realizing how how alike we're more alike than we are different in many, absolutely in every way. it's just like you're a democrat and i don't like you you're a republican i don't like you it's that's just not good for a democracy at all no at all i, I know there's fringe beliefs on both sides that are getting a lot more voice because it's just not there's more there's it's a bell curve more people are in that middle yeah. part than there so i think if we get enough people talking it'll it would i don't know it would better society better better institutions better economy everything really yeah i mean more people would realize that it's nonsense to think that life is so black and white or and, and it makes much more sense to collaborate and find out new ideas and compromise and maybe get more than two parties in in the government yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. one of yeah. these days but anyway so let's get back to philosophy absolutely so yeah it, in your in your view what is philosophy well if you're asking a philosopher that you're going to get a long response but we got time uh it's the word philosophy is like the root is philos and sophia it's obviously a greek term because western philosophy founded by the greeks and philos means love and sophia means wisdom it is the love of wisdom it's something that so something like it starts oh it starts with wonder 
that's what Aristotle, Plato would say. It starts with wondering about the world and how, and Socrates, the founder of Western philosophy would say, it's about uh, knowing how to live your life. It's the art of dying. It is trying to live a virtuous life, trying to like, what's going on here? Like, what is, like, that's the field of metaphysics. It's, like what exists and there's science and science says like certain things about the world but there's certain assumptions built into science that philosophy still has a part of like science for me because most that's the most common philosophy obviously religion is another one we'll get to that but science is birthed from a philosophical approach to knowledge and that's the only thing we get taught in grade school or from grade school up even you could get a master's degree and not take any philosophy course in economics or anything really but it, it being like the umbrella of all disciplines makes it critical to know about it in my opinion because if you don't know how you're asking questions you don't challenge your own assumptions like what like if you're looking up a scientific theory or about mind or something you got to ask questions about how you ask questions. If that sounds contrived and a loop, it it, it, it totally makes sense. Some a lot of the earlier philosophers that I know about, like it, it, a lot of it is about knowing how to create an argument, knowing how to totally. ask questions, and then say, you know what, I think this is the answer, and here's why, because I've been sitting around thinking about it, right? Absolutely, and yeah. that's that's kind of my view of philosophy. It's thinking about the craziest questions that maybe not everyone is thinking about and then you try and look for answers or Absolutely. ponder that question for who knows how long just cuz it's a love of trying to figure out like not the right answer it's just finding it's more into getting the right questions okay. than just focusing like most people focus there i'm a democrat because i believe in xyz like certain moral issues like birth control and all these other things and it's more like well that's like birth control and abortion it's more like instead of just saying oh i'm right because life is sacred or oh i'm right because women have choice philosophy is trying to say hey this is a tough question i don't have an answer for it but we should try to work it out together not just say i'm right you're wrong yeah see, hard, see the best path that it's and definitely it's very hard trying to figure out the logic for morals the logic for science for the logic of religion like there's certain like religion has a metaphysics about the world it has a physics of the world how they see the world in a certain yeah. way like like christianity promotes uh the existence of a soul that's a metaphysical belief about the world it's but that's part of philosophy too so like all of these different things. It's not like the thing that annoys me is people think, oh, you're into philosophy, you're going to be an atheist. No, no, you don't have like philosophy is for religious people, atheist people, science, agnostic, everybody. Because it's, it's people, they, we've been doing this for, oh, about 2,500 years, give or take, in the West, at least. Yeah. Well, you said it's, it's the love of wisdom. So, Almost anybody could be a philosopher. I, absolutely, I, absolutely. I would, I would right. put, I would put money on anybody listening to this right now is probably a philosopher. You have philosophical beliefs. You examine them. Socrates, the founder, you've heard of, you've at least heard of that name. I hope. <laughs> I hope we can hope the educational yeah. system in America or whatever you guys are from has at least introduced that name to you. But his most famous thing is like the unexamined life is not worth living. He goes like he he gets into trouble because philosophers love to get in to a bit of trouble by questioning everybody about what they know. And his thing is the only thing what he said is the only thing I know is that I know nothing. That's a bit of a joke because yeah. it's like then. But then how do you know that you know nothing? Isn't that something that you know? It's a bit of a paradox, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's doing this while he's on trial. And then he says, like, the unexam... He, the Apology is one of the, his most famous, like, Plato's most famous work. 
reporting what happened to his because Plato is a is a student of Socrates. Yeah. So he's got he obviously loves his teacher and like thinks he's the best, but he tells the story about he's waiting, he he gets condemned to death. That is a whole story, but he basically goes out like well, his last saying pretty much is the unexamined life is worth living. Tells like go like tells people about what he thinks about the afterlife and whatnot and he says the unexamined life is not worth living and then he drinks the hemlock and dies Mm. because he thinks he's gonna get to he says he's going to get to this heavenly place where he can just do philosophy till the end forever (laughs) yeah he just gets to talk to people He, he thinks like socrates thinks philosophy is the best thing it's the best of all things for him because yeah. like it's just about how it's talking to people and like seeing just examining life a bit more because we're all alive it gets into it's just we'll, like we're alive like that's the most famous branch that focuses on that like keys into that is existentialism yeah i mean Ex- just just walk a mile in somebody else's shoes check out other perspectives you know l- listen out other culture other, other, yeah, other ideas. arguments not just we get into these echo chambers these days and philosophy is about like saying giving everything a chance like i'm a biologist i'll give a chance to like creation science like i'll give it a chance i don't i i have <laughs> arguments against it but i'll at least say hey you got some arguments some interesting ones they have some irreducible complexity of like how dna and how the eye thing oh that's interesting lay it out for me you yeah know, lay it out like i want to yeah. hear it instead of like oh that's that's crazy christian stuff i'm not gonna listen to that yeah i'll listen to you i like my goal as a philosopher is to my personal i don't know uh charge as a philosopher is to try to find as much wisdom as I can in this world and then maybe maybe teach it or something like that that's what I want to do mm-hmm. I don't know what level I'd love to be an intro to philosophy professor that'd be so much fun it's just, it's just life man like I've always loved like deep conversations like what we're having right now throughout my entire life and I've it's just grown from that and it's been a it's I find it more fruitful that I have some friends like I I just want some money, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's people that just, you just, if that's it to your life and it's not, there's there's something more and people find it in religion, but I think you can find it in philosophy as well. Yeah. And I, you, you mentioned existentialism and yeah. um, some of the people that know what me. Do think, what do you know about it? <laughs> yeah. Some of the people that know me uh, uh, will know that I consider myself an existentialist and I I'm not nearly as inept as you are in the the book the literature of the subject and everything yeah. but I know the but basic think- ideas and as far as I understand it it what well, started out with essentialism right where we're kind of but before existentialism wasn't there yes. es- essentialism right we're kind of everything yeah everything has an essence yeah, everything has an yeah. essence, and then that kind of grew into the thing to the thinking of maybe life has no meaning, but we can make meaning out of it ourselves. So, yeah, there's no meaning to the the chaos of the universe that brought us to this point in time where we exist. But damn, it's pretty freaking cool to be here. You know, like you, you could do a whole yeah. lot. You can have hobbies. You can have relationships. You know, it's it's pretty incredible. So that's kind of my my way of seeing existentialism so you a philosopher tell me about existentialism what's what's important about it what do i need to know like essentialism is what you your initial like the topic you brought up was aristotle everything's got an essential thing that makes it so like a tape a chair for example what i'm sitting in there's thousand millions of chairs out there but the essential property there are a certain set of essential properties that make a chair a chair it's sitting on it like it's able to be seen you can sit on it it's got four a number of legs it's got what you commonly think is a definition of a chair 
Yeah. But then you apply that to a human and what we are. And the, what's the quote? The quote is, existence precedes essence. That's famous from uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, French existentialist, famous one. He's the second easiest to read because Nietzsche is kind of difficult. Anyway, the, there's other existence. Nietzsche is probably the most famous. God is dead, but we'll get to that. <laughs> and it's just existence precedes essence. And our, for an existentialist, our essence does not determine what we are. You are free. You are a free. There are certain things that you don't have control over. Small certain things like where you're born, genetics, all that kind of stuff. But you are free to, to paint the picture of your existence completely. You're completely free. It's almost what we, as Sartre would say, we are condemned to be free. That's why you, you were a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were, yeah. You you were a bit surprised before before we started recording that I I said that I happen to like capitalism, but as an existentialist, I love freedom. I love the free market. Freedom. Yeah, I like the freedom. This of is choice. more of a philosophical, like ex, like a deep sort of freedom, not just a market value. I, I, I know. You know. I of course, like, of course, but it's similar to, similar ideas. You know, like I I know that that, that relates more to liberalism and different like you like like a, a lock and whatnot. That's his sort of ideas of how an economy or a state and property. And we could probably talk for two years on this stuff. And yeah. that's what, that's why I'm into philosophy, man. I could talk about this all day. It's yeah. like actually having professors in philosophy and like talking to them is like getting someone who's like, whoa, like I don't know anything. And that's 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 a good thing in philosophy. It's it's about like, hey, I don't know what the hell's going on. Existentialism's like, yeah, you, we're like, oh, what's the like? You you see a bird and you think it could fly anywhere. It could do anything it wants. And then you look at a human being, all of our capacity and varying levels. Of course, some people are not lucky, but people like you and you and me are like, we could. We want to go to the top of Mount Everest, go for it. You're a human being. You're free. You're essentially free. 